Welcome back. You know, it always brings me greatest joy to introduce my dear friends here on the show, especially when they are the most amazing experts that you need to know, and I know you're going to love them too. So I am thrilled to introduce you to Dr. Janet Woods, who, by the way, is a Laguna Woods resident. And she is a certified feng shui grand master. She's a lifestyle expert, an author, a coach, a speaker, a White House honoree. She has over 25 years experience helping individuals and organizations transform their lives and their spaces. So their environments, their homes, their offices, using the ancient art of feng shui. Janet, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show. It has been a minute since we've seen you. Yes, it has. I'm so excited to be on the show. And I'm also very excited because we certainly need to have some spring going on. We do. And so that is exactly why I invited Janet here with us today is to help us literally lighten ourselves up and flow into spring in the lightest, best way. I even went digging through my closet to find my most springy color to wear for today. It was not easy since it's still winter over here. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so Janet, tell us tell us a little bit about what got you into the art of feng shui and, and then let's launch into our, what can we do to make our lives lighter and brighter going forward into the spring season? Well, I have a confession. I got into feng shui because I was looking for a way to manipulate my employees. Oh. <laughs> I was working as a manager in customer service for Xerox, and I was looking for a way to keep my, my employees awake. I worked at the graveyard shift, and so people would come and they would fall asleep at their terminals. And so I started my path on feng shui after seeing the founder of Oracle on, on 60 Minutes talking about how he had used feng shui and the company's profits had tripled. And I was like, well, I need that. And so I sought a feng shui master, which took me a while because, you know, in the early 90s, we as Americans didn't really know what feng shui was. And so I found a feng shui master and what's really wonderful is that I went on to not, I want, I say, I went on to learn nine more schools of feng shui so that I can make sure that whatever I'm doing fits the person. That's amazing. And your confession is safe with us. It's just literally in the tone <laughs> of silence right here. No problem. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> So much sense. I mean, just energetically, and you and I have worked together in my home and in other locations over the years, and I've watched you work on so many businesses that really, really turned around once you shifted the energy. So let's talk about how this stuff works at home and, and what are things that we can do? Okay. Well, what's really wonderful is that your home is where you manifest. Everything that is in your home is causing your life. And so using feng shui to your advantage instead of your house using you is the most important thing that you can do. And it's also a very big secret. And it really is all about how the energy flows in your space. And if you can get that correct, you have the edge, not only in business, but also in your personal life. It's one of those things that we don't charge you extra if you use it at home and at work, right? No, we do not charge you extra. But there, okay. are, some, there are some principles and springtime is the perfect time to start applying some of the secrets that I'm going to give you today. I oh, can't wait. And in addition to the secrets. Mm -hmm. I want to know some of the mistakes that people make. I want to know some of the real, the real no-nos you've seen, but let's, let's start with the secrets. We'll start with the secrets. And so the first thing you want to do, it is spring. And so you want to open up your windows and your doors for like 10 minutes a day. And that brings in all that wonderful energy that we call chi. Not only that, when it comes to windows, is that you want to pay the money and get your windows clean. Because <laughs> the windows are the eyes of the soul into your house. 
And so get those windows clean. I know you probably, a lot of you think that, oh, well, my windows are clean. I can see out of them. Well, I want you to pretend that your window is like a camera. And if the lens is dirty, what else do you think is dirty? By association, right? If you don't pay attention to the details mm -hmm. of your details, you're certainly not going to pay attention to my details, right? Isn't that how it works? Yes, that is. It certainly is. So we're going to start by getting our windows cleaned. I'm looking at mine here in the studio thinking, mm -hmm. okay, I got a new project. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when, um, I, when we take a look at all the things that we see outside of our windows, that affects you as well. And so I always want people to remember that. If you have something that you're looking at that you have no control over, that you don't wanna see, buy some sheer curtains and put those up on your windows so that it doesn't distract from your home. Oh, that's wonderful. And sheer curtains, or even if you want to be more specific, something like flower boxes or anything that can draw your focus. Does that work the same way? Yes, it does. It does. I know um, where I live, flower boxes are a little hard uh, to have because uh, we are a planned community. And inside of that, I found that sheer curtains really help. Okay. So doing things internal to your space that you can control. Yes. Uh, now we've got clean windows and we've got some sheer curtains keeping our energy in. What are we doing next? We're going to talk about the private spaces in your home. And those spaces are the bedroom, the bathroom, and sometimes your office, depending upon the type of work that you're doing. And so we'll start with the bedroom. In your bedroom, I want you to remove any plants that you have. You don't want to have plants in the bedroom. You want to have them in what we call the public spaces, which is the living room, the dining room, and the kitchen. But in your private spaces, in the bedroom, you want to have flowers. And the reason being is that flowers bring in happiness. And I'm going to share with you a, a flower recipe a little bit later. Um, but when you bring in flowers and have great bedding, it allows you to feel happy. And when you're happy, as my husband would say, everybody else is happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. And that's not not just the happy wife, happy, happy life theory. That's just the yes. being in every room, right? Absolutely. I uh, keep in mind that you spend a third of your life in bed. So get some new sheets for the spring. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a quick and easy way to. Just kind of boost yourself anyway. I think everybody likes to have something a little fresh and new. Sheets, yes. pillowcases, pillow covers, those are easy things to do. Yes, they are. And what it does is when you bring in the new stuff, it helps to balance the energy of your home because your home is like, oh, we got new stuff. <laughs> We're like that. So is your house. <laughs> the energy travels. All right. So is that so? Flowers in the bedroom, would that be a potted flower plant would be okay? Uh, you can do a, as long as it's small. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have something too big because keep in mind, the things that you do in the bedroom is you're rejuvenating your life or you're having sex. And so flowers are the best. <laughs> if you're lucky, you are. Good job. Okay. Where are we going to from the bedroom? Well, when we go to the bathroom, the bathroom, you, you do not want to have flowers because <laughs> that's where you can put the plants. Okay. Okay. In the, in the bathroom, the bathroom has always been considered a drain because before it came into the home, it was always outside. And also your private spaces is where love is created and you don't want to create love in a drain. And so you know, no flower, shower curtains, wallpaper. Don't wow. Do it. Wow. It, it will affect your relationships and not just romantic relationships, you know, but relationships with your kids, your grandkids, your friends. And so that's where the plants go. And here's something that I'm going to debunk. In a lot of feng shui, um, books and magazines, they tell you to keep the door closed in the bathroom and keep the toilet lid down. And 
they say, oh, it's to keep money in. The real thing is, is keeping the lid on your toilet down is more sanitary because you share your toilet with the person that's next door. And so you want to keep it down because it keeps your space clean. Also, keeping the door closed, you want to keep the door ajar so that you know if someone's in it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is that is a real thing. Yes, yes. real thing that keeping yes. the door closed often causes walk-ins when they might be uh, least desired. I remember at least in my family, locking the bathroom door was not allowed because mm -hmm. if you had an accident in the bathroom, somebody needed to be able to get in. So, Absolutely. so yeah, the bathroom door was never fully closed unless there was somebody in there, but I never knew why. Look at us. We were ahead of our time. Yes. Yes, you were. <laughs> and when we are talking about public spaces, so we're going to go to the living room, the dining room, and the kitchen. You want to bring in nature, and we call that the five elements. And when we're talking about five elements, we're talking about not only objects that can support you during the spring, but also the vibration of color is very important, which we are showing today. <laughs> So the five elements are water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. And these elements work with one another to create what we call a system of energy flow. And then adding color to the elements makes it even better. So the most powerful element, and we are experiencing this in California, is the element of water. And the water is known to bring with the flow wealth and prosperity. And so you wanna have something that represents that in your home, whether it be a beachscape or a water fountain or the color blue. The color blue brings in calmness and also refreshing energy. Good to know, okay. Next we have wood. Wood represents growth and vitality. And that's where your house plants come in because house plants, as they grow, so do you. But there are certain plants that are the best. So you wanna have like English ivy, uh, peace lilies, and also Chinese evergreens. Uh, and you wanna put them, uh, just like what I have in my office, you wanna put them so they drape around corners so that the energy can flow easily. And you know, you can also have them on your desk. Um, especially if you're working from home, because that's going to grow your home business. And the colors that are associated with wood are green, brown, and purples. Excellent. And I just, I look behind you and I see all of that resident in your space. So that's perfect. The next one, we're almost done, but these are very important things that you need to know. Um, because if you have this down, you don't have to hire someone like me. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. <laughs> well, I'll say it's going to get you started. And so fire element, it fuels passion and it triggers creativity. And so candles are the perfect solution. And you can use the electronic candles or the real candles, whichever you are happy with. Um, in the business of feng shui, the electronic candles are actually symbols of candle candles. And so those are perfect for you to use. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, fire is about rebirth. And it is associated with the colors of red, orange, and pink. And I have to tell you that the latest fashion trend are those colors. We call them dopamine colors, because when you see someone in it, it uplifts you and makes you happy. And you're wearing them today. <laughs> You're making a lot of people happy. <laughs> that is what I live for. <laughs> yes, yes. So let's talk about the earth, okay? Earth element, it's stabilizing and it also generates nourishment and knowledge. And so this is where, you know, outside on your patio when it's not snowing is where you have like terracotta pots or in your home, you can have a salt rock lamp to bring in that element. And then the colors are like a really pretty yellow, a uh, beige and sand. And that also offers stability and also calming protection. I love that. I have a, a salt lamp at mm -hmm. my entrance. 
sense when you walk in the door. Yes, it's, yes. It's the perfect welcome. Yes, it is. It really is. And it also purifies the air as well. Love that. Mm -hmm. Our final element is metal. So this element is known to create strength and independence. And this is where you want to bring in maybe your metal picture frames or wind chimes outside on your patio. Um, and also clocks. Clocks are symbolic of metal. I didn't know that. Yes. And the colors are really fun because they are grays and whites and gold, copper, silver. And what this does is it also creates elegance and clarity and lightness. And I love those metallics because you know. <laughs> yes, we all love those metallics. <laughs> Janet, this is fabulous. And we've been showing photos while you're describing these, we've been showing the audience photos of rooms that are representative, which I absolutely love. They are incredibly beautiful and you can feel the the dominance of that particular element so thank you for sharing those with us now i know i asked you to give us some of the you know the real faux pas the real mistakes give me just one blunder you've seen that that making these changes really shifted everything i can tell you that the biggest no no when it comes to feng shui is not moving your stuff around Okay. Because, you know, just like we change our clothes, you want to change your space up because when you do that, it adds more energy. That I see as a no no. I know um, a lot of people, you know, they set their home up, they use HGTV to decorate, and it's staying that way. Well, guess what? You don't wear the same clothes every day, neither should your home. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. So before we go, I have two more questions. Number but, one, where can our viewers find you and get more information? Well, I'm happy to support everybody inside of springtime. And so my email address is very easy. It's Janet at JanetWoods.com. And then on all social media, you can reach me at Dr. Janet Woods. And I have something for your, your audience. Excellent. We love gifts. Yes. Email me and I will send you a form to fill out just your name, um, email address, and, and your phone number or your zip code. Something really easy. I'm going to send you our daily quote of the day called Empowered Success. And we have a magazine uh, that we put out every other month called Start Healthy. It normally costs, I do believe it's been a while, uh, but the price has gone up. It normally costs, I do believe it's like $25 for an annual subscription, um, but you'll be able to get that for free. And what I love about this magazine is that it has little tear out recipes for you to keep and put in your recipe box. And also inside of that, great tips. And also um, not only just tips about the home, but tips about your health, because your health is your wealth. It absolutely is. And I have to say, it's a beautiful, glossy magazine. I absolutely love it. I know we've joked before, every time I get my magazine, the next morning, it's coffee with Janet. And <laughs> it's the perfect way to start the day. But then people who were coming to clients, friends, even my family would walk in and say, oh, what's this? So now I, I've kept every uh, every not episode, but <laughs> every copy, every copy <laughs> of the magazine <laughs> and, and people come and look through it all the time. My mother tries to sneak them out of here. I'm like, no, 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 you leave that here. <laughs> oh, it sounds like we're going to need to give them their own. You may need to give them their own subscription. There's the word. Janet, yes. we will post all your contact information and the magazine information in the blog post on the website, along with the segment. Thank you so much for sharing your genius with us. I'm so grateful to see you again and looking forward to spring for all of us, a very happy, healthy, and energetic, energized, productive, prosperous, whatever our new feng shui can bring. Thank you for oh, joining us. Thank you so much for having me. And we'll be right back.